What's up, Natural Market? How you doing? Gonna see if a couple more people get in. So they're trying to take you out. Oh, man. Some wild times we in. It's also a time of breakthroughs. For sure. Definitely sending that that positive energy. Send some of that Gabriel too. Some of that Gabriel sound. I don't know if uh, I don't know if anybody else will get on because I don't know the last time I'm on here probably I don't know six months ago. Who knows? But I'm not gonna be on here long. I just um. I want to talk about kind of what's um, kind of what's going on right now, and what inspired this this title. I must admit, it's a little it's a little clickbait baitish, a little clickbait because it's. Cause I know the title sound I'm about to talk about some folk or whatever, but the coons. I'm literally talking about the coons, like the animal, the raccoon. These animals, these raccoons, have figured out a way to get into our house through the um, HVAC vents outside and they above they in and got into the ceiling above the bedroom and they up there scratching, scratching, scratching so we waiting on the, uh, the, the animal wildlife dude to get here uh, Saturday to come and figure out how he going to get him up out of there. But I never overlooked the fact that things are symbols. And so I went and started looking into the symbolism of the raccoon. And it turns out it led me down this rabbit hole. Because it turns out that um, the term raccoon goes back to Algonquin and the 
name is Alakun or something like that. Oh, you keep saying a rabbit. You keep saying rabbit. Well, that's that's a that's a good sign. That's fertility. Okay. Remind me to come back to the rabbit. So the um the the raccoon uh a raccoon is supposed to mean he who scratches with his hands. And if if you've been following, those who've been following for a while may have heard me do the, the thing about what the word Christ means, uh, Christos, or, you know, with it being anointed, um, anointed to anoint means to rub, and Christ means to scratch. And so when we anoint, we're scratching to, to reveal what's beneath the surface. And we also rub and scratch to, to generate a fire. So I'm like, wait a minute. This raccoon got some type of uh, Christ symbolism about it. And this raccoon is possibly telling me to do some digging. This played out in many ways. First of all, the Algonquins are were said to be in the area of around Delaware, Philadelphia, um, with the Lenape, the Delaware Indians slash Moors, the Algonquins, the Lenape. And what's crazy is just last year, we found found this whole half of my family on my mama's side that we didn't even know existed. And some of them live in Philadelphia and around Delaware, New Jersey. And I said, man, it just sent me down this rabbit hole like, oh boy. And so I started doing some research and it connects back to the Moors. So I started looking up some some stuff because I, my grandmother on my father's side said, told my cousin when Roots came out in 1977, he said she told him, we don't come from Africa. And she wasn't saying that to try to distance herself from Africa she was saying it as if to say that they was telling a lie that all of us came from that landmass. And my people on my father's side come from Anderson, South Carolina, which is the area that is known for Blackfoot, Cherokee, Creek, and a whole host of other nations. And I started going down this rabbit hole of looking because this is all started from the raccoon. Who is our raccoon, which means to scratch. And all this happening right before the eclipse that's coming up on April 8th. And, and this also the discovery of the raccoons was before Easter. Which we know is. You know, from the religious standpoint, they celebrate in resurrection, but a metaphysical standpoint is we're crossing the vernal equinox and our own spirit is supposed to be resurrected. But first, it has to be dug out of a grave, scratched. And so it has led me down this rabbit hole and I'm just going to give out some just some funny things I discovered. The Negro Law of South Carolina, collected and digested by John Belton O'Neill, one of the judges of the courts of law and errors of the said state under a resolution of the State Agricultural Society of South Carolina, read before them at their September semi-annual meeting, 1848 at Spartanburg Courthouse. Now, what's interesting in, in this, just one thing that really pops out is uh, Section 1, the Act of 1740, 
declares all Negroes and Indians uh, free Indians in amity with this government, Negroes, mulattoes, and mestizos who are now free accepted to be slaves, the offspring to follow the condition of the mother and that such slaves are chattels are chattels personal. So let me find something in here stuck out that um, their definition of let me find this. I should have highlighted it. The term Negro is confined to a slave. Here it go. Yo, what's up? What's up, Dap? The term Negro is confined to a slave. No, the term Negro is confined to slave Africans, the ancient Berbers, and their descendants. It does not embrace the free inhabitants of Africa, such as the Egyptians, Moors, or the Negro Asiatics, such as Laskers. Now, here's what's funny about this, because I've been all these years, I've been listening to Taj Tariq Bay, and he's been going on and on about colorable law, colorable law. And he's been talking about um, the emphasis on merging all of these different subsets into what is the ultimate that it comes out of and, and how the the understanding of inheritability associated with Moorish bloodline, which is Moabite out of the Bible, bloodline, how it helps to diffuse all this confusion. Because if you listen, you look at this, you'll see a game that was playing out. Now, remember, this is this is read in 1848. And so there's a there's a game that's unfolding because this this document says that the term Negro is confined to slave Africans, the ancient Berbers. Now, listen to this. Now, when you go here, this is an unabridged dictionary. Webster's Third New International. And I got to get a better, like a, a Oxford. But still, it's unabridged, so it's going to give you a lot more detail and breakdown. That's why it, it come in three volumes. So when you look up Berber in here, it says a member of a Caucasoid people of northern Africa, west of Tripoli, closely related to southern Europeans, Egyptians, and Ethiopians. Now this now this is a now this is a hodgepodge of mixed up confusion here. Because this the way it is used here in this document. The term Negro is confined to slave Africans, the ancient Berbers, in parenthesis, and their descendants. It does not embrace the free inhabitants of Africa, such as the Egyptians, Moors. Now here, in this dictionary, it is going to associate Berbers with Caucasoid people of northern Africa, west of Tripoli, and with Egyptians and Ethiopians. Now, Anybody knows Egyptian, Egyptian is also, uh, um, what was the term in Greek? In Greek, um, Egyptos, or um, I'm trying to think of the term, but either it means burnt face. So anywhere Ethiopian has been used, even in the Bible, it's swarthy, referring to Sheba, swarthy, dark. But here in this dictionary, it's, cor it's correlating Berber with Ep Ethiopian and also Southern European, which then would say, but then it, it, it correlates it with Caucasoid. So this don't make no sense. They are contradicting each other. Then you go and look up the term uh, what else did I look up? Then you look up more. 
a member of dark skinned people of mixed Arab and Berber ancestry. Now, here's another contradiction. The other uh, definition said Berber Caucasoid. Same dictionary. Same dictionary, just, just another volume. This is H through R. H through R defines more as a member of a dark skinned people of mixed Arab and Berber ancestry inhabiting ancient Mauritania in North Africa and conquering Spain in the eighth century. Moroccan, Berber, Muslim, uh, Mormon, uh, one of a group of people of mixed Indian, white, and Negro ancestry in central Delaware. And this is how it connected back to the raccoon, because the raccoon is a Algonquin term, and Algonquin's part of their territory, from what I found, is Delaware. And, and some of that is overlap with Delaware, Lenape, um, I can't remember the other terms uh, for these different nations. And it's just mind blowing. And it's obvious that something that has been a concerted effort to convolute the identity of me and people who look like me in this landmass. Why is this conversation so pertinent now is because the eclipse coming up in on the 8th of April is in Aries and Aries is the sign of identity. And so it's a it's a it's a, a natural inclination I feel to be to to feel curious about one's identity. Me personally, especially just for a family, like I found out that my my mother's great grandmother, who raised it was it was Pay, Hattie, Dorothy, Sandra, and William, who became Labib, all in one house. So Pay was the matriarch. We discovered that Pay was short for Peggy had another set of children in Trinity that she had left behind. And we deduce, and these children are very fair. And that side of the family we never know existed. And we deduce that she had possibly, probably, or likely been abused. You can't say the word, the R word, but S-A, you know, the S abuse by someone of European descent. And it appears that she had to flee that area and therefore she comes to Asheville where a whole new set of, and she meets a whole, uh, her husband and, and our lineage begins with, we don't know anything about this other world that existed down there. My grandmother did, but my mama didn't really. We knew we had people down there, but we didn't know that there was this other, um, that she had children. Those children would end up some kind of way migrating up to the Philadelphia, New Jersey area. And it turned out that her son, Paige's son, Frank, ended up living up in New Jersey and was right across the street almost from his own cousins. No, would have been his siblings that didn't even know that they even existed. And so... Here I am in my family trying to, I'm trying to, we're still trying to figure out who we are, where we come from. Like we just discovered a whole nother, I mean, we did the whole DNA, the, the saliva, like we, we are, that's our family. And so now I open up this whole rabbit hole because 
when you go on the, the, the ancestry thing, everything is Congo and Nigeria and Liberia and Ghana. And I, and, and I, I, I don't believe it. I think it's the flim flam. And when you look at these contradictory definitions going back to the 19th century, and then you factor into this, no other group of people has had their name changed, their identity changed. I found, I, um, I found it, I paid $40 to download this document. So you gotta, you gotta pay for stuff now because they, it's, Stuff is being gate kept. I paid forty dollars to get this. Where well, they're discussing uh, these surveys, and they're taking surveys on how people feel about the name they're called. It's the so-called black people. So from this as early, if not earlier, as early as the 18th century, the the term Negro becomes in vogue. And it was, you can see how when you look at these old documents, you can see how they were moving away from more. And they were breaking it down. Indian, Berber, Negro, Mulatto, Mestizo, Lasker. And they were, and they, what they were doing, they were diluting the identity until finally you get up here to 200 something years later and it's like, I don't know what, I'm black. I'm, 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 and it shows. So 17th, 18th century, up until the 19th century, up until the early 1900s, uh, Negro. Then it becomes colored. How do we know? We got a whole organization, the National Association for the advancement of colored people. And that name ain't even changed. It still holds today, colored people. But we, we don't think of it because we just say NAACP. But that C is for colored. Taj Tariq Bay, colorable law. Things appearing as though they are one way, but they're not. This is what colorable law is. The assumption. Then you go from colored and you back and forth between colored and negro, negro up until the 19, late 1950s and 60s, then the term black emerges. And, then, and, this, and this, this, this article shows how they created the debate between one faction says, oh, I want to keep negro, I want to keep colored. And then they show the debate between being called colored, Negro, and black. And how some people saying, well, black is negative. It means death and, and Negro is that. And it's all Hegelian dialectic because you're, de you're debating over something that is not even the authentic nomenclature for these people. And then it goes from being Negro, colored, then black becomes accepted. And now here's the part where I remember. I remember Jesse Jackson running for president in 1988. And I remember us adopting the term Afro slash African American. And you got to think and see this is why it looks. Now I got to say this. I need anybody who sees this on this channel. I need you to come and subscribe to my 720 astrology channel. Just put in at 720 Astrology, you're going to see my other channel. You've got to come over there because what I'm working on now is the astrology around these events. You got to look at things, how they brought through. As we become African-American, Jesse Jackson makes that announcement. You got to see what's going on in the heavens. It is Saturn and Uranus are forming a conjunction. And they're ending a cycle from like 1942. They conjunct every 42 years. So Saturn is the past and it is time and it is tradition. And Uranus is the future. Uranus is invention. So they invented a new identity or tradition for us in 1988, which is also, you got to think, in 1987, the book comes out called 
Afrocentricity. Peace, black butterfly. So we, so it's like, oh boy, now a whole can of worms opens up. Now you got to really think about even the beauty of all the learning that we extracted um, from the Afrocentric movement. We now got to even go back and question its origin. When you take into, into account these the 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 um the conflict over the name well one one dictionary dis, uh, d- defines it this but we have primary source a primary source is whenever you can get something from the actual period so that first document i read was primary source cuz they're reading the minutes from a meeting in 1848 well they distinctly differentiate berber from more, and it's like, wait a minute, how? But then the dictionary says that Burpa means Caucasoid. So it's as if that was an, uh, um, a, 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 a definite effort to create confusion over identity. So now I've got to even wonder about the Afrocentric movement. Oh, man. 1987, Ronald Reagan comes out and says, what if there was an alien threat that was, you know, that would help us overcome all of our petty differences and such and such? And and what if the discovery that he's talking about is the true nationality or inheritability of of a said group of people and and the necessity of recognizing them as an alien force that will help help us squash our petty differences because this is the greater threat. But, and, and let me say this too, when Ronald Reagan makes this speech and comes out and says this, Scorpio is rising and Pluto was in Scorpio in 1987 when he made that, that speech before the General Assembly in New York you can always go and see presidential speeches. They'll show you the time of the speech and you can cast a chart for that. And Ronald Reagan had an in-house astrologer named Joan Quigley who worked for his wife because his wife was big into that. His wife determined when he was going to speak, when he going to fly, whatever, through her uh, astrologer who was on retainer. Watching the time, I got to... So... When he makes that speech, he is speaking of an occult movement. He's not speaking of something that's that's we, we hear the speech. We're thinking he's talking about Star Wars and all that something out there. But he's doing it when the when the sign of a, of hidden things and the planet of hidden things are rising. When you want to elect a time to do something, you want to put on the ascendant, the planet. And if possible, the sign that represents what you look to accomplish. So if you speak while Pluto and Scorpio are rising, then that means whatever you're talking about, you ain't it's something underneath that people got to really find the true meaning of. What's up, E? Um, so he's not speaking on the surface. He's he was never talking about Star Wars out there. He was talking about Star Wars in here. That was the Star Wars. And so I'm giving you all this because when you look at anything in history, you have to look across the horizon line to see what else is happening and look at the astronomical alignments at that time. And they will help you understand what the motives are. Why did they put this into the into the universities? Why did they allow for African studies if this was going to be the most revolutionary and counter countermeasure to whatever they were doing? Why would they allow it? And it's cooking my noodle. Because if you were thinking Afrocentric in 1988, like my father was, then you were ostracized at that time because it was even ahead of 
some people were still stuck in this the old give me that old time religion. So if, if you were at, at that at, in the 1980s and you were even saying stuff like Jesus is black, what they call black theology, James Cone, Albert E. Cleage, um, I can't remember the other, James uh, uh, Frazier, Frazier was one of them, Cone, Frazier, and Cleage. They were some of the three major voices in black theology. So that was the, the, the type of revolutionary spirit my father was moving through. And he was in a minority relative to the rest of his and our community because they weren't trying to, you know, they weren't trying to entertain none of that. It was just all about Lord help me and sin and all that, all that bullshit. So, but, but to think this is how if knowledge is quantum. So even, and that's why we have to build on even the steps that the people before us had laid because it's not the end all be all. And it is not to say that all those people, because I know my father and I know he was, but it, it's, it's, it's a continued circle of evolution. And as we go along and we're in the age of Aquarius, where more things and, and Pluto is in Aquarius, revealing knowledge that has been hidden. We are tasked to keep digging. Like, like this is people are waking up and it's cool, but they're only waking up to like my melanin. I got melanin and brown rocks and this. And it's like, oh, man, you poor thing. You poor thing. Bless your heart. I'm so glad that you are awake. But goddamn dogs wake up in the morning. Everybody wakes up. Some. Some people wake up and they play video games all day. Waking up, it should not be so celebrated. It's about what you do when you wake up. So that, that little pat yourself on the back got to be momentary. Go brush your teeth. Wash your behind. And you got to now start your day. Because even the concept of melanin, which, which we started exploring that in the late 80s. The book, the, 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 the book that launched it, Melon, the Cosmic Key to Greatness, that launched it. And it was revolutionary at the time. Now, where we are in our thinking, we have to we have to be to the point where we're like to fully understand it. And we got to study Superman and think like they be giving you little clues like the same thing, like Superman, Superman comes from Krypton. But Kryptonite is what weakens him. They're giving you the secret right there. His colors are red, blue, and yellow. Mixing together, it makes brown. So they, they're telling you, but they're also telling you more if you go past the ego and just feeling good about yourself. They're telling you that melanin is not good or bad. That's the secret. It's nothing to go around here like... It is good to celebrate and be thankful for. Let me not trip because I'm thankful I got power in my house. Think of melanin like power. I have power in my house. I got my phone plugged in right now charging while I'm talking so it don't go dead. But check, if I wet my hands and take the face plate off this outlet and stick my finger in there, I'm going to get electrocuted. So the power is neither good nor bad. It is how I use it. You got to understand everything that's coming forth at this time, 1987, 88 is crucial. This is when the crack epidemic is like. <sighs> because crack was designed to bond with the melanin chemical nature. And it's about the taste. We we'll started talking to my barber about this yesterday. It's the taste and the fact that we have an affinity for smoking. Because he was like, man, I don't understand how. He said, you know how it how it how it gets locked up, you know, what what goes in it, how you lock it and da, da, da. da. And it, how could that all of a sudden you got to understand studying the people 
for 150 years or so, the chemistry. And you create something that bonds with the taste buds and that the natural inclination towards smoking. Because this group of people, before being bothered, would sit around and smoke hemp and still be productive. And somebody's studying, sitting back and collecting data, collecting data, collecting data, and figured out how to create something to bond with Superman's superpowers. And although he comes from Krypton to create kryptonite that'll cripple him. All coming out around this time. And there's so much more to this because it's, 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 it's all types of roles converging, but it all started from this raccoon digging above my damn ceiling. So spirit said, go, go digging and like, like just sent me down. This is, and it's like, this is an interruption because I'm working on stuff for my business and I need to, get my social media jumping. And then, and so I get interrupted from the stuff I've been working on. Like I got videos I need to put out about the eclipse and this and that. And it sends me down this fucking rabbit hole, which is still in alignment with the eclipse because it's about identity. As we approach this eclipse, identity is being is being placed on display. It's the focus. Who are you? What are you? Why are you? And how does that show up in, in any relationship you're involved in? Because the eclipse axis is between Aries and Libra. It is the I versus the we. We as in you and some someone else. So what's the quality of what's the quality of, of your I am? All right, black butterfly, be safe to currently on the train, so I shall watch, listen more than type. Thank you for your scholarship in the leg. Yes, thank you. Thank you for your energy. Thank you. And once again, for the replay and who's ever listening, please go and subscribe to my 720 Astrology on YouTube. Because what I'm trying to do, I need to get to that thousand so I can live stream over there. I need to be able to live stream on that channel. I'm at like, I'm up to three something right now, but I need to hit this thousand so I can go live over there um, because... They put the whammy on this channel right here. So it ain't gonna, it ain't gonna, it ain't gonna go no, it ain't gonna grow. So I need the people who really, you know, mess with me tough. Go over there. If you haven't already, go over there and subscribe. And the 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 sauce that I would normally bring over here, you know, you know, I'm a little, I don't uh I don't cuss as much over there. You know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to be on my, my Dunny Brasco, you know, but, um, but what I'm doing is I'm merging the worlds of astrology, esotericism, metaphysics, which I current, I, prom I, I honestly don't think a lot of astrologers I see on YouTube are doing like and 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 mind you a lot of them probably know more than me about just astrology but I would fathom myself to be a renaissance man that um I, I don't fit into no one box so my thing is I'm always trying to see the whole picture you know and I don't yo, what's up? Stimuli God. I'm trying to see the whole picture. And so 
and I'm not part of a, um, if you pay attention to a lot of astrologers, they got like a, there's a, 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 a set type of philosophy about the world that they seem to have to promote. Like, who, who's going to break down the astrology as it relates to a Ronald Reagan speech or the emergence of, of crack or, um, you know, other key events. What does Francis, how about this one? What does Francis Scott Key have to do with Nat Turner? How about that? How about that bridge falls? And how about we research who Francis Scott Key is? And look at the area that he's in. Where was the Nat Turner Rebellion? In Virginia. How far is Virginia from Baltimore? Not far. They were, they were, uh, they were moving around each other around that same time. <laughs> and do you know there's a birth chart for the opening of the Francis Scott Key Bridge? And it's Libra rising, Libra rising. The South Node is in Libra. The South Node is where we are releasing and leaving things. And the North Node is where we're moving. So the South Node and the eclipse, the lunar eclipse in Libra, fell on the ascendant of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. See, these are things like this I want to be able to go into um, conversation about on my other on my other uh, channel. And all of this stuff ties in because he's got connections to the Morovians. The Morovians have connections to uh, this group of of barbarians who came out of Philadelphia and who offed a bunch of Ohio slash Delaware Indians. And they have a connection down in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, which ties back to where I said, where, I, where my other people are down in that area. So it's, 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 and I'm not saying this is about me, but it's, but what I'm saying is sometimes something about you can be running parallel or concurrent with something else going on on the greater scale of history. And by pursuing or digging into one thing, it may open up doors about something else. It's crazy. Now, uh, Natural market before I go. The rabbits. Are you still here? You still on here? Because she said she asked about mentioning the rabbits. Seeing rabbits in the uh in the uh garage. Oh, okay, all right. So one thing about rabbits and, and get the book. Get the book, uh, Natural Speaks. A brother sent me that book, like, I don't know, like two, three years ago. It's one of the, one of the greatest, uh, one of my most treasured uh, tools. So, uh, all right, am I back? All right, if somebody tried to call me. Okay, the deal with the rabbit is a rabbit can be completely still and can leap forward at the drop of a dime. So a, wab a rabbit can go, oh man, I said wabbit like uh, Alma Fudd, wascally wabbit. Um, a rabbit can go from completely still, you know, and leap forward. So for one, seeing a rabbit can let you know, can give you, can be 
something to give you uh, some encouragement. Because uh, it may be a time where you feel like you're stuck. Sometimes they'll show up when you feel like you're stuck. Um, and they can be reminding you that things can turn uh, at the drop of a dime, that you can suddenly uh, propel forward. Uh, rabbits also represent fertility, which is why the whole thing of Peter Rabbit uh, for uh, Easter because Easter is based on, I mean, you know, those who are in the know, you know, Easter is based on Anana, and Anana coincides with Astarte, and Astarte coincides with Ishtar. And from Ishtar, we get Eastar. And, and from both, we get estrogen, Astarte, estrogen. And so estrogen is necessary for fertility. And so the, the rabbit, the rabbit around Easter is a fertility motif. Now, that doesn't necessarily have to mean literally children, but it can be fertility as in it can be financial. It can be fertility in your thoughts as far as you having ideas that come. It can just be purely energetic where just just a feeling that life itself kind of picks up it can also be uh, a, a heads up too that things might pick up so that you need to be prepared um, the fast movement of the rabbit is also necessary for it to evade predators so the rabbit can also be telling you to, to stay on the move, you know, to not get stuck, uh, to be versatile. So just some things to, to think about. But again, um, I need I need those who rock with me. I need your help. If you're not already, go over and subscribe to 720 Astrology and let's uh, get up to a thousand so I can get some live streams going over there. And I'm, I'm much more consistent over there with posting videos. But um. I'm going to wrap this up. You, you're welcome, Natural Market. I appreciate all y'all tuning in. Um, and for this upcoming eclipse, if you can find some time to... Uh, that book is uh, Nature Speaks, Paula. That's the book about the animals, Nature Speaks. Uh, if you can find some time to steal away on that day of the eclipse, um, I was telling my barber, I don't I don't recommend going out and putting the glasses on and staring at it. Um, you, you're welcome. I, I think. Every nature does not mean for us to commodify and commercialize it. And I, and I think. It's dangerous to think that nature is here for our entertainment. And so this is people are making light of this. Or else they're completely on the other end of the spectrum saying the world going to end. Well, motherfucker, if the world end, it's going to end for you, too. So so what good is it to tell me that it's about to end? Like, uh, do you have 10 million dollars to build you a bunker, you know? So I mean, what's the what's the what's the point of the the ultra fear mongering? You know, um, the the focus is on self, and what's the quality of my relationship with myself first? And the quality of my relationship with myself 
first will then reflect in my relationship with another. And that's the focus. And I think right now the, the, the plan is to divert attention from self and not self as in a selfish way, as in I'm the only person in the world, but self as in accountability. Accountability, really examining yourself. And right now, Mercury's retrograde. So we got a lot of energy of really going back and looking things over, rethinking things. And our patience is being challenged. Mine is being challenged, you know. So I'm not immune, but um, it is. What's up, Faye? It is. It is. It behooves us to really try to find some time, like the old folk would say, to steal away as best we can. Because what we're doing, we're opening up a gateway for the next 19 years. And my gateway for me, what I want to be doing is I want to teach on a more official capacity. I want to teach. You know, even if the astrologers, like even when I do people's readings, I'm doing it, but I don't, people come and they want fortune telling. I'm not a fucking fortune teller. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to help people see their nature so that they can evolve. And 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 so really our teaching is really what I the astrology is a gateway to teaching. And it's one of, I think one of the top and best ways to teach and to fulfill that axiom of man know thyself. And man, not a gender, but man as in a species. Man, know thyself. Not what's coming for me. When am I going to get what I want? How come I can't find no woman? How come I can't find no man? You know, bullshit, low vibration questions. Instead of like, why am I the way I am? Why does that still hurt me? And, and or I never knew that that hurt was there and it's been affecting me all this time. God damn, I never even knew. That that's what we supposed to be on. Thank you. Thank you, natural market. Thank you. Um, so. That's where that's where I'm at, that, that's what time I'm on. Come over to the other channel. I've been saying it forever that I'm that I'm uh, that I'm gonna start teaching astrology. Class number one begins April 29th. I gotta look at my ephemeris again, but I think it's whatever the last Sunday in the month of April, after Mercury is direct. That's when that's when we're gonna start doing classes. And it's and on my website they're called Sacred Teachings. Cause it's not just gonna be astrology. It's gonna be, it's gonna be everything. It's gonna be everything, and I can't even give them names. You know, all the what, all of it, etymology, esotericism, breaking down uh, Hebrew scripture, magic, astrology, numerology, all that shit. It's all set up and ready to go. I just have not said nothing, but the time has come. April 29th, it is on. And I've been reluctant to say this, but I'm a goddamn master teacher. I've been reluctant to say it, but I'm 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 going to start all these other motherfuckers call themselves master teachers. God damn it, I'm one of them. not because of my ego, because of my intentions. And my intention has always been to help motherfuckers, even when they don't want it.
And I have no fucking money because my money has been spent on learning. That's where my money gone. Learn it. Fucking $40, you know, on, on a damn PDF. The gift is not to know. The gift is to want to know. That's Bobby Hemmett. That's a Bobby Hemmett quote. The gift is not to know. It's to want to know. That's what makes me a master. Not because of what I know. It's just the desire I have to know. And other masters like me. So. Not to be on no beating my drum type shit, but goddamn, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's time, it's time to rise up. And y'all that's been down, like you people who I disappear for fucking seven, eight months and, and I, and I hit live and you pop up like, I fucks with you. You know, I appreciate that. You know, Faye been, Faye been down for a long time, been riding, you know, um, you know, uh, Natural Market, Black Butterfly, Dap, who is digital, digital music art, you know, and you'll see if you see some of my videos and you see uh, the music, you'll see in the, the description at digital music art. You go. So you go to his channel, you know, so that's where the music's coming. But, you know. I'm honoring the breath that is still flowing through my body, but I got to do what I was put here to do. And I challenge all of you to have courage, because that's Aries, courage, to not shy away from the battle that you have to fight, because sometimes you've got to fight, but to also recognize when it's time to extend the olive branch. But don't be afraid to assert and be a goddamn leader. Don't be a follower. Be a leader. All these things are on the table with the eclipse in Aries. Fuck being a follower. I'm looking to talk to leaders. Followers want to be told what to think. Leaders want to think. Like when my man E send me shit, some shit I, you know, he, he challenges and you know, if we, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an intellectual joust and we don't agree on everything, you know, but that's what the shit should be. Cause that motherfucker got a mind of his own. So I appreciate you all here who even entertain my ramblings, you know, and who, who show a hunger for this type of discourse. I appreciate you. I honor you. If you're not yet, go on over there, subscribe to 720, and let's do what we're supposed to do. There are devices that will come online when the organism is seemingly under a threat. There are devices that will come online. It's Bobby Hemmett. And that book is called Kundalini. Uh, uh, wait, uh, Kund I can't remember the name of it, but that's the quote from the book. There are devices that will come online. All right. As always, stay down till you get up. When you get up, stay down. And here's my uh, my tagline for 720 astro Astrology. Know the stars to know yourself. Peace.